Today we're dealing with a huge massive health problem and that has to do with antibiotic resistance. This is when bacteria become resistant to some of our most potent and most powerful drugs that we have available to us. This is not good. Well, one of my professors back in undergrad, he taught us that, well, this points to evolution, or more specifically, Darwinian evolution. It's evolving. So, is it Darwinian evolution? Hey, what's up guys? This is Daniel from iApologia.com, where science, reason, and Christianity meet. When I was in this class, it kind of frustrated me because it was a big lecture hall and it didn't really allow well for interaction between peers and the professor. And so when he just states it as a factual statement, instead of allowing discussion, it kind of made me unsettled because I knew it did not point to Darwinian evolution. I knew the three ways that bacteria gain resistance or have resistance to antibiotics. Let me share those with you really quickly here. The first one is horizontal gene transfer. This is where bacteria somehow share genes from each other. They share back and forth. And underneath horizontal gene transfer, there's three ways. The first way that can happen under horizontal gene transfer is where a bacteria can pick up a naked DNA strand from the environment. You see, maybe some sort of bacteria died, it has some sort of gene resistance to some sort of drug or antibiotic, and this, these bacteria can pick up these genes from the environment, incorporate them into their own genome, and be able to be now resistant to these powerful antibiotics. The next way is something we call transduction. You see, transduction is when a certain virus can take certain genes from one bacteria and give it to another bacteria. When it does that, these bacteria can now gain resistance or this gene that this virus transferred from one to the other. This is the second way underneath this horizontal gene transfer that bacteria can gain resistance to antibiotics. The third item underneath of horizontal gene transfer is conjugation. Conjugation is when one bacteria shares genes with another bacteria. When it does this, it forms some sort of little tube-like structure that allows the transfer of these genes to allows it to become resistant to antibiotics. Okay, so the first one was horizontal gene transfer, which had three main subheadings underneath that. That was transduction, transformation, and conjugation. The second main item that we want to talk about is that some of these bacteria already had resistance before the antibiotics came out in the first place. So the first one is sharing these antibacterial genes. The second one some of these bacteria already had the ability to be resistant to antibiotics. They have a wide array or a wide variety of different genes that gives them the ability to say, okay, here's a chemical that uh, is bad for me so I can be resistant to it. If you notice so far, both of those two ways have nothing to do with evolution or Darwinian evolution. The closest you could say is that maybe horizontal evolution where they're sharing genes among themselves, but this is not evolution in the sense of Darwin's idea of vertical evolution. However, the third one would be the closest one that you could come to, to Darwinian evolution. And I don't even think that holds up under tough scrutiny as well. Let me show you why. So let's just first define Darwinian evolution, the evolution that we're talking about here. I would define Darwinian evolution as such. We have all have a universal common ancestor, all of the plants behind me, all of the animals and all the bugs, all have a common ancestor. And this came about through genetic mutations. So uh, the original universal common ancestor had a certain set of genome and all of us through the generations has spread out and has dispersed. And we have this variety of life today because of, there's all sorts of genetic mutation. And this genetic mutation was weeded out. The bad genes were kicked out and thrown out and the good genes were saved. And they were saved through a process which we call natural selection. In other words, if I would define this real quickly here, is that we all came from a common ancestor via genetic mutation filtered by natural selection. The third way that bacteria can become resistant to antibiotics is through genetic mutation. And this would be the closest one to the Darwinian evolution idea, right? 
So yes, certain bacteria can become resistant because there's a certain gene that can change structure, which also translates into changing some sort of structure in the protein or some sort of machine or something like that, which allows this bacteria or bacterium to survive. However, we're, most people don't realize this. When we talk about mutation, we're talking about errors in the genetic code. Think of it this way. Think of you writing a paper for, let's say, a school or a document that you're going to email out to people. You get up and you go get a cup of coffee. Well, you're just on your computer typing, a hey, nice paper, ready to send, ready to print, whatever. Well, guess what? Your cat comes along and jumps on your keyboard and starts laying on it, jumping around on it, and the delete button is pressed, the different uh, keys are pressed, the backspaces are pressed. Uh, diff we have this random text and random removals and additions to the text. Now, is your text in your paper going to be better off or worse off than before? And even if you'd go through some sort of process like natural selection with a paper, it still wouldn't allow it to get better, I wouldn't think. I mean, it goes against our universal experience. Same with in the genome. When the genome gets worse, when the genome goes through mutations, it's getting worse. It's breaking. And this is what's happening in this type of system where we're gaining antibiotic resistance in bacteria. You see, these bacteria are not necessarily gaining usable functional information to become resistant to these antibiotics, but rather these bacteria have these genes that get broken, that get messed up, which messes up a protein, which messes up a machine that allows certain types of antibiotics that get, to get pumped into the bacteria. So even when we're talking about mutation that causes antibiotic resistance, even that is not really Darwinian evolution. Actually, the opposite. We're breaking things, not building things up. We're not making new things, we're breaking things. Anybody can break stuff. It's hard to make stuff, however. So in the end, we don't really see a Darwinian explanation for this. Actually, it seems to point the opposite way. There seems to be a lot of design going on there. And when that design breaks, it's not a good thing, ultimately. Yes, it might stay the bacteria, but it does break a machine. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to like below and also subscribe to this channel. If you would like more people to hear this message, feel free to share this on your social media pages. All right, guys, thanks for coming on board. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Go out, give your world Christ.